Stephanie with the blog TheRanchersHomestead.com. Welcome back to the channel. So this morning I am whipping up some of my homemade peppermint mocha cre coffee creamer and I wanted to show you what I do for it. I'm also going to take you along today. I am, once I get my coffee in, I am going to go and plan out my week and how I organize the tasks that I need to do in the week and the way that I do it. And so I wanted to take you along with that today and show you kind of my steps and my tricks and staying organized and to be able to maximize your time. So the first thing that you're gonna do, well the first thing we need to do is we need to get some coffee in us before we can start maximizing our time and organizing our week. But I'm gonna get some really delicious homemade peppermint mocha creamer recipe right here. Okay, so I'm going to take one cup of heavy cream. Now this heavy cream is raw. I buy it from my neighbor and look at how thick that is. So you're going to take one cup of it and you're going to put it in a quart sized jar. Then you're going to go ahead and measure out three fourths a cup of milk. This is raw milk as well. I like to try and stay with the raw dairy products if I can. And add that to your jar. This is how simple and easy this is. Okay, then I'm gonna add two tablespoons of hot cocoa mix. Now, this hot cocoa mix is my homemade blend. Um, I will link it in the description. You can use any that you'd like. Um, this just does coconut sugar, cocoa powder, and a little bit of cinnamon and salt. Now I'm going to do three tablespoons of pure maple syrup. Now you can do more or less of this to your taste depending on the hot cocoa mix that you're using. It will depend on how much sweetness is already in it. So you may not need the extra um, maple syrup, three tablespoons of that. You might want it, but you might not. So um, I would just definitely do it to taste and know what you're putting in in your hot cocoa mix. And then you're gonna do one tablespoon of peppermint extract. Now you're gonna take your whisk here and you're just gonna whisk it all up. Another way that you could do this is with an emergent blender, and that would work really nicely too. It would be nice and foamy and fluffy, um, but I use a whisk and that's fine too. Either way works. And now, you know, pour yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. Give it a shake before every use because things will start to separate. You know, when you're making homemade ingredients, they will separate. And pour a little bit this, of this into your coffee with your nice hot, hot cup of coffee and it'll be delicious and we will be ready to tackle our day and get our week organized. Okay, so now we need to get, we got our coffee here in our hand and we need to get our week organized. So I am a big day planner person. Um, actually one of my goals this year is to create my own day planner to fit for me because I love a, day, a good day planner um, that fits for everything that I use it for and hopefully by the end of 2023 I will have that out for you all to share in it with me. Um, but for now I just buy day planners every single year from Walmart. And I just kind of look through them and make sure that it has enough space for me and what I want to do. Here's my first tip. Every Sunday, I sit down after church and plan out my week. And this includes planning out my entire week of what I want to do each day. It includes my uh, meals for that week, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It includes my grocery shopping list for that week if I need to go. Um, toiletries, all of that gets added to my list. This includes all of that. And it usually takes me about an hour to two hours depending on how extensive it is and how much I need to do. But um, that helps me so much to maximize my time. So I'm gonna walk you through the process that I do. So the first thing that I do is I get out my day planner and I look at the week that we're on. 
while I'm looking at the week, I am then able to see what I have going on that week and what nights things need to be plugged into my day planner. So when they're plugged into my day planner, then I will go along and I will plug in everything that I have something to do that day. So if I have an appointment, if the kids have an activity, anything like that, and I'll plug it into my day that, um, that we're working on that week. Then I will write in all of my staples. So if you have followed me for a while, you've seen my um, how I clean my house, deep clean my house in 15 minutes a day. That schedule, so my room tour is what I call it, for the day gets plugged into that day. I do one load of laundry a day, that gets plugged in. Um, and then anything else that I need to do. Once I know if I'm going to be out of the house or if there's something special that needs to be done that day, and if there's not, then I'm able to plug in more extensive projects. So if I have a canning project I want to do, or if I have a closet I want to organize, or anything like that, I can go ahead and plug those in depending on what's going on that week. And this just helps me to stay organized. Now, when I plan out my week on Sundays, things change and that's okay. So I try and do the best I can knowing what I need to do. Like I teach at church on Wednesday nights. So on Monday or Tuesday, depending on if I have something going on those two days, I will plug in plan your lesson for Wednesday. That way that doesn't get missed and I don't put in like some big project on that day and then that gets completely missed and then Wednesday comes around and I don't have a lesson planned. So little things like that, I just constantly roll over week after week but it does change a little bit depending on what I have going on that week. The other thing that I do is I plan out my meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner during this time. I am able to write out exactly what we're gonna eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and there is no surprise for me each day, which I thoroughly enjoy. By doing this in a day planner, I am able to look back. So since we just started a new year, it's a little bit harder for me um, because I, I'd have to keep pulling out my old day planner from last year. But as the year goes on, if I'm feeling like, oh, I don't know what to make, what to plug in this week for meals, I'll go back a couple months and look at what I made in a previous week, two months prior. Nobody's probably sick of it at that point. And so I'll plug something in and it just keeps it fresh. And I don't have to constantly reinvent the wheel and try and figure out what I'm going to make. I redo things all the time. And then what I do is, is once I have my meals planned, once I have my days planned, I plug in a day that I'm going to do a town day. And typically for us, that's Tuesdays because we go into town anyways for the girls to do sewing. And so I try and do all of my errands on that day. Since we homeschool, we're home all day long and um, it doesn't make sense for us to take the 20 miles into town multiple times a week. So I try and compact it into one day a week. Doesn't always happen. But I will take my meals and I will look in my pantry, I will look on, on my refrigerator or in my refrigerator and see what I need and I will make my grocery list. I will also make sure that if we have any toiletries that we're out of that gets added onto my grocery list because I usually do it at Walmart. We have a super Walmart so I can get toiletries and groceries at the same time if we're out of batteries or um, if the kids need tights or a notebook or whatever, I make sure to plug that into my list so that I'm not trying to remember everything when I go off into the store. Um, this has been really, really helpful for me in maximizing my time. I often get asked how, I, one of the things I always get asked on Instagram, do you ever get tired? <laughs> and yes, yes I do get tired. Um, I am not some superwoman that has it all together, absolutely not. But having a day planner and having a plan has definitely been something that has helped me tremendously in staying organized and maximizing my time and getting as much as I can done. Something as simple as a day planner and a couple of hours a week of planning will help in the rest of your week. I promise that. So go make some coffee creamer, some homemade peppermint mocha coffee creamer. Sit down with a day planner and start planning out your week. The first couple times you do it, it is, takes a little bit longer as you're getting in the groove of it. Then it just becomes a habit and it comes really, it flows really naturally for you. I know which things I need to plug in that are just every single week we do. And then I plug in the extras and then I plug in projects. So it's really that simple. You want to do your rollovers, everything that you're going to do every single week. 
You want to then plug in your out of the house things that you're going to do that week and then your extras. And then you are all done for the week and you will feel really accomplished as you get to check things off as you go along. So I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you learned something new and how to organize your week, organize your day, and we will see you next time. As always, please like and subscribe the video. I give out one new video every single week. Jump on over to the blog, www.theranchershomestead.com, and I give two emails out a week on new blog posts over there, and we will see you next time. Take care.